2008 was brutal. <laughs> um, yeah, 2008, we had the third consecutive failure of the Falcon 1 rocket for SpaceX. Tesla almost went bankrupt. We, we closed our financing round 6 p.m. Christmas Eve, 2008. We would have gone bankrupt two days after Christmas, otherwise. And I got divorced. That was like rough, man. Women has caught issue there. SpaceX is alive by the skin of its teeth, so is Tesla. If, if things had just gone a little bit the other way, it, both companies would be dead. And when you put your blood, sweat, and tears into creating something, or building something, it's like a child. When you had that third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. First of all, I'd say starting a business is not for everyone. Generally, starting a business, I'd say, number one is have a high pain threshold. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's, um, that's generally what happens. When you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things, things are great. And then, so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues. Uh, and happiness will steadily decline, and then you'll go through a whole world of hurt. And then eventually, you'll, if you succeed, and in most cases, you will not succeed. Um, and, and Tesla almost didn't succeed, came very close to failure. Um, then if, if you succeed, then after a long time, you will finally get back to happiness. That, you, that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. If you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or, or new market that, if it's an untapped market, the standard is the, the rest of society. I think that's a good thing. Like, it doesn't have to change the world. Like, you know, um, if you're doing something that has high value to, to people, um, and, and frankly, even if it's something, if it's like um, just a little game um, or some improvement in photo sharing or something, if it has, if it has a small amount of of good uh, for a large number of people. I mean, I think that's that's fine. Like, stuff doesn't need to be changed the world just to be good. But it, you know, in terms of things that I think are most likely to affect the, the future of humanity, I think um, AI is probably the single biggest item in the near term that's likely to affect uh, humanity. Humanity really is not evolved to think of existential threats in general. We've evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term. To, to be upset with other humans and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. But then, just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. Uh, we have global warming, which could destroy civilization, or, or at least severely disrupt uh, civilization. Um, Excuse me, how could AI destroy civilization? You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but it might be relegated to a small corner of the world when homo sapiens. It's very important that we have the advent of AI uh, in a good way, because it is something that could go wrong. We really need to make sure it goes right. And if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there, Mars, and maybe beyond Mars, the moons of Jupiter, traveling frequently throughout the solar system. I think all of this is possible within 50 years. And I think that would be very exciting to do that.